Good morning. I'm standing here on the Haywards Heath Road at North Chaley, and we're here to see Leeward House and its adjoining barn. Just so you know where we are, north, we're on the east, uh, sorry, the western outskirts of North Chaley. The village is about a mile to our east, and about three miles to our east is Newick Village. And if you followed the A272 in a westerly direction, you'd come to Haywards Heath in about four miles. That's where your nearest railway station is. But we're in a wonderful semi-rural location here. We're, we're backing onto uh, farmland, literally across the road and over the back of us here, you've got Chaley Common Nature Reserve. So if you'd like to walk or uh, get out with a, with a dog, it's a lovely place to be. This whole area is riddled with footpaths and bridleways, giving endless walks and um, lovely walks to the nearby villages and pubs. Now, this is a rather interesting setup. So we have a house, we've also got a barn conversion. The whole property is for sale as one. It's not gonna be divided, but there is planning consent uh, to turn the barn into a separate five bedroom house as well. And as you can see, they've both got their own driveways, which is good. So uh, come down, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna walk you down the drive just to give you an idea of the whole setup. Now in all, we're in just under an acre. We're in 0.96 acres, so I think we can call it an acre. The lovely thing is both properties, if you were to separate these, would make uh, really well divided uh, setups. Because obviously you've got the house with its gar double garage and all the front garden. Obviously the barn is here which also has its uh, gardens. And of course, if you put a fence down through the middle, it's almost a perfect split. In fact, whilst we're here, let's do the barn first. So if you were coming in off the driveway, that would have its own uh, planning permission was granted for all this last year. So it's still got uh, several, well, two and a half years to go. Uh, there'll be a double garage just here. And then this modern at cost barn that will come down and there's various things so you need to look at look at the planning commission but this part of the barn can be extended forward i'll explain the layout of the rooms in particular you've got this fabulous old oak tree i was always baffled to see why they'd give planning commission so no near to an old tree but it's all been granted obviously you have the root protection things um, to take it in but we think that's about 500 years old so fabulous setup. So this building, this all stays. So this is a fabulous handy building. This would make a great home office or even a separate little guest suite if you wanted to do it. It's got its gardens there. As mentioned, this Atcos, Atcos barn comes down and I'll just give you a quick scan through. So just remember this building gets extended that way. So imagine there'll be a bedroom there with its ensuite, another bedroom in this section with another bathroom and then a study and if you see that wall on the end, that, so this is only single story, that then goes into the main barn. Now also the barn can be extended. So none of this is listed and it's in remarkably good condition. So this barn becomes one massive open plan space. It extends by three meters in that direction. So this can be kitchen. This is not just a massive living area, dining area. And then an extension of the barn comes across this way. So pretty much in this area here, which is an enormous kitchen breakfast room, which is space. And I'll quickly show you out the back. I'll go through this gap. And look at this view. It's a really great setup. So the barn, loads of room around it, overlooking these fields. This land we're told is owned by a farmer who will not see houses built on it as long as his uh, life depends on it, I'm sure. Um, but there's no chance of him selling the land or f certainly for development. Uh, but as you can see, this barn will be fabulous. And obviously the house is separate. So we'll walk back round the gap to give you an idea. You're on private drainage here. So you have your own septic tank system. Um, obviously, you know, if you're gonna convert the barn for yourself, then you'd just tap straight into your septic tank. If anyone uh, knows anything about private drainage, when you have a septic tank, well, there's two types of private drainage. There's a cesspit, which is a pit that fills up and you empty it. A septic tank is a biological system. What goes in there slowly breaks down and the liquid comes up and filters away. And that goes down a pipe and goes over into a ditch over in those trees. That's what they call your rights to discharge. And you need that. It's an old system. It's been here since the owners bought the property, uh, but it all works perfectly well couple of other little points worth a mention. The owner actually had a new, there was an overhead power cable. When the new house was built next door, I'll quickly give you a quick glimpse of that one. So you can see that was only built a few years ago. So great big new house next door with a great big garage. Um, there was an overhead power cable. So the uh, electricity board, I assume, 
ran an underground power cable. So that's now underground going into the barn there, which has got the barn's own power. That water main, the blue pipe, that's just a, um, that's just a, uh, a pipe uh, to um, be ready to be connected for water as well. And then obviously you'd have oil heating as well on that side. So the house itself, come and have a look at this. So great big garden. You've got a lovely big double garage there. Now that's got an inspection pit and there's an RSG, RSJ going across the, uh, the uh, roof line which will give you um, uh, plenty of power if you wanted to put any lifting equipment in there if you're a mechanic. So, come in. I'm gonna take my shoes off. So, the entrance hall, lovely oak flooring in here. You've got the stairs obviously going up to the landing. And this house is very sprawling, so there's a lot of space. You've got a, uh, so I turn the light off, downstairs loo. In fact, we'll go round in order. So, this end, you've got one very lovely little snug come sitting room, lots of storage cupboards all along that wall. And in here, there is a fireplace and a dodgy estate agent in the mirror. But really lovely little room, very relaxing room. Again, you've got so much flexibility. They've got one room you'll see in a sec, which is very much used as a downstairs bedroom for family. This inner lobby, really handy. Again, lots of cupboards. And then there's a study. This is an internal room. Great home working space. There is that glass panel there, which is actually covered from the other side, but that does give you natural light through. And obviously a load of wardrobe or lots of lot more storage cupboards. Great for home office on that wall. This is the little room I said is currently, as you can see, a bedroom or another home office. We, we seem to be living in a world now where we just, when I ask people, you know, how many bedrooms do you want? The amount of you that turn me down and say, it's not about bedrooms. We want six or seven rooms. So we, everyone wants these home offices now. This house has got five rooms downstairs. You've seen three so far. Now they extended it. When the owners bought this, literally within a few years, I sold it to them in 1999. When they bought it, they did that extension. So the bedroom you just went in and this kitchen wrapping around here, they added this bit on. So fabulous big kitchen. As you can see, lots of room for a big fridge. They've got pantry cupboards there, the central island, various things built in. And I'll quickly show you out onto the deck whilst we're here. What a lovely feature. Shame it's such a dull day. And the deck is obviously not being used. You've got an upper deck. This lower deck, when they built it, that was uh, reinforced to take a, uh, a hot tub. So it should be more strong enough for that. I mean, the house has been extended, but there is a lot of potential to extend this further. Of course, this is then open into the dining room. It's another lovely room. You could separate this properly if you wanted. I mean, that's a big enough kitchen breakfast room, but really lovely sprawling space for a big family and lots of entertainment. And then the main living room is this end with another fireplace. As you can see, we've got a wood burning stove in there. Again, more storage cupboards. And again, taking full advantage of that view out the back. Barbecue, barbecue all ready for use. So that's the ground floor. The ground floor is a lot bigger than the first floor space. And then come upstairs. So just recall that you've got five rooms downstairs, a kitchen and a cloakroom. And then upstairs, I'll go round again in order. On the left front corner, another nice bedroom here. So a smaller double overlooking the front. Built in wardrobe. Next door, you've got a lovely little bedroom. This is very much being used as a hobby room. Very organised. Someone is very, very productive in here. And at the back, what is very much the main bedroom. It's a nice size bedroom there with that view. Look at that. It's a shame you can't really see it today, but you can see right up towards the, uh, I think it's the Ashdown Forest over in the distance. Not a bad view in the mornings. It's normally sheep in those fields, I'm told. Again, two lots of wardrobes in this room and a fab big bathroom. So a nice bathroom. They obviously refitted these a few years ago. So freestanding bath, all beautifully tiled, and a separate shower cubicle. So three bedrooms that end. And on the other side, you have another double bedroom. Decent sized double here. Again, that's got the view. You can see, obviously, you've got the flat roof above the dining area and the kitchen. So if you really wanted to push this out and make these bedrooms a lot bigger upstairs or put a fifth bedroom in, you could. Again, another wardrobe, loads of storage. 
you don't get all this storage in a new, new build. And then the family bathroom, which is all nicely done in the white suite. The house is absolutely spotlessly clean. As you can see, it's all very neutrally decorated. Um, people will want to come in and make their own changes and do their own thing, that's understandable. But as you can see, you've got a fabulous bit of space and you've got potential to create a separate building next door. Great development opportunity if you're a developer or a builder or want to do a joint venture with a friend and buy the house together and then split them. You could, you could actually make good money out of this. I'd like to think that barn when converted with all the garden front and back and the double garage, I mean, that's going to be another one and a quarter million pound house all day long. So there is potential there. But there you go. That's Leewood House and its barn on the Haywards Heath Road at North Chaley. You're close to uh, Newick Village with its excellent green and several pubs. You, you're only four and a half miles out of Haywards Heath from Haywards Heath Station. You've got really good local schools. The nearest primary school is at Wivelsfield or, or Skeynes Hill. Children from this area go to uh, Chaley Secondary School down in South Chaley. Now that is an excellent secondary school. There's only about 700 kids in it. And the area has numerous independent schools. And most of those private schools locally all run a school bus service with pickup points close by. There you go, that's Leewood House. I hope you found that useful. If you'd like some more information, please contact our Newick office. Thank you.